Hey everybody, welcome back. James here, Caroline Forge. Uh, we have a little bit of a different one for you today. We're going to go off speed a little bit. Been making a lot of hammers, been really putting that gas forge to uh, use, and uh, it's time to reline it. Uh, some of my refractory is breaking off of it on the inside, and I, I got to take care of that because it's not safe to have that KO wool exposed like that. So, I'm going to show you how I go about tearing out the refractory in hopes keeping the KO wool intact because the KO wool still looks fine because it's not that old. But the the problem I have is the opening when I built this forge is too small, so the hammers going in and out have been banging on the refractory in and out the opening, and it's cracked it and broke it. So when I take this apart and take the refractory out, I'm going to take that front piece of K wool out and also make the opening in the front of the forge bigger before I put it back together. So it's kind of going to help me in two different process, two different ways doing this. So I'm going to bring you along with me, let you see how I do this, guys. Uh, shouldn't take too long, hopefully. Uh, curing it is what takes the longest, really. But, you know, that's for me, not for you guys. I, Two seconds after I hit the stop button here you know it'll take me forever to take you a couple minutes to watch it on video so here you're gonna kind of get up close to my forge as well you can see the burner set up here I piped it in where it comes through I've got an exhaust muffler uh, hard pipe and flex pipe this is open here this is high heat tape to keep it uh, together because once you cut that it wants to come apart you gotta keep it together with a hose clamp clamp around the flare MIG tips in there, shut off valves, um, so it doesn't take all the air from the back. You might even have a couple holes drilled here for relief to get the right fuel mixture and air mixture. So a lot of the air comes out here, and it also helps it blows this heat away. So, anyways, let's get this opened up. Okay. You can see here, going in and out the door, I've caught the refractory, and it's breaking off now. So, what we've got to do, I need to get some safety gear on, just, but I'm just going to show you what the issue is. We've got that, and, th and it, that's why I want to reline it too, because the safety issue of it. This stuff is uh, very dangerous, the fibers of this uh, K-Wool blowing out, especially because I have a blown burner. I have a forced air, so there's a lot of air coming through here and coming out the front. It's going to blow them fibers out here, and I'm going to be breathing that in. That is terrible. You don't want to do that. So I have to get this fixed. But you can see in here, I pulled the fire brick up because we're going to be doing it. And it also has cracked the liner back here in the back. I don't know how well you can see inside there. Can you see in there at all? Whatsoever? I don't think you can. We'll see. But anyways, let's see if I can see in here. There's a big bare spot of cable right here, probably that big around where I pulled this fire brick out. So we're going to see if we can repair that, knock this uh, refractory off as best we can, get that fixed, and go from there. Get this door open. I want up to here. reiterate is safety precautions with this stuff uh, with cable. Um, always latex gloves, something like that, something you throw away because uh, this stuff's worse than fiberglass. It, it, it'll mess you up. Breather, uh, dust mask, I'm not too sure. You could try, you could read up on the dust mask, see what it's rated for, but I would recommend the respirator. Goggles that seal around your face, not safety glasses. Don't want to get these fibers into your eyes when you're messing with this stuff. Uh, long sleeve shirt, something like that to keep it off your skin as best you can. Tuck it in. You don't want to get it down in your pants, trust me. You don't. Uh, make sure you take the proper safety because we're messing with this stuff, guys. Please, uh, please, please, please. Okay. All right, we're going to start by getting this refractory off, which may just entail pulling the uh, entire piece of cable off of here. Okay. Refractory's coming right off. Perfect. It's still pretty rigid. 
Uh, and I got some more K1. If I tear it up, I don't have a problem putting new in it at all. But this stuff is still good for right now. I can still reuse this, no problem. It has not been burnt up. Now I'm trying to remove this chunk without tearing it up. Get it up over these posts that I put on here when I to hold it on. And it holds them on really well. This side towards the, towards the uh, face. I brought forge in. Uh, I went ahead and took the liberty of stripping most of the refractory out of it because we're going to reline the whole thing while we're doing it. Do it right. And uh, now we're going to remove the burners because I need to replace my flares. So these, it's just as simple. Loosening these screws. stainless flares instead of the black iron because after a while that is what you get so we're going to pull these bad boys off and really to see how bad they are we got now i've got all the refractory cement out of the forge and it's ready to be recoated i'm going to put a small fire brick in the bottom for a flux catch from when i'm forge welding i have a nice solid base there so i won't deteriorate the floor so bad but uh, it won't stay in there. I'm just going to put it in there for now uh, after I put some cement in there to get kind of the form of it in there. All right. We'll see. It might stay in there. I might. All right. Get you a good amount of your refractory cement. If I had to guess, I probably got about five pounds there. So. Alright, now, I'm just going to add some water. We want this to the consistency of about oatmeal, a uh, thick paste, not too thick to where you can't spread it, but not so thin that it wants to run on you. We're going to get us a scrap piece of steel for a stir stick. There we go. I've got a bucket of water here. We're going to add this one cup at a time. There's one cup there. We're going to stir this up.
see that one cup of water pretty much is all I'm going to need for this thing. I'll mix this up real, you want to mix steak night for about 10 or 15 minutes until the, all the clumps are gone, get all the clumps out. See how smooth that is now? Okay. Now, you start putting it in there. So, uh, replace the flares in there, as you can see. Got uh, some mud in here. This is just the first coat. The second coat, I'll smooth it all up. Um, tell you, it's real tough to get this stuff on there without it falling off so you get it on as best you can on your first coat I'm gonna let it sit out here we're gonna let it dry for a little while a couple hours then I'll fire the forge back up and go through my burn cycles on this uh, layer and then we'll coat it again and repeat that process I want to put about three coats on this thing so it should hold up for a while It'll be nice and durable um, so I think on that third coat or second or third coat I may go ahead and put the fire brick down in the bottom and form it around it. So now we got the first coat on here. We're gonna let it sit for a little while. And then fire it. Right, just drying inside the forge. We're gonna go ahead and get this front taken care of. I've drawn out here. Don't mind these marks. I'm going a little bigger. This is where I want to go for now. And then we'll see what we think about it before we finish it up. But I'm gonna cut this out. Plus, it's already cooked anyways and uh, we're going to line it a little better this time too so we won't have to worry about that happening again but this is going to allow me to get in and out of there a lot easier without hitting the sides of the uh, entry and chipping the refractory away causing it to do this so we're going to cut this out with the angle grinder Sit out here for a shelf. Well, it's all blade. Uh, will be perfect for a shelf. Okay, I don't care if it's got that hole. I'm gonna cut this up. This is uh, just an uh, just to show you, you know, scrounge around, scrap stuff. This is a nice, large, thick chunk, about an eighth inch thick. I can cut this up, make plenty of things. I'm gonna use it to make my shelf. So you never know. It's no good for a knife because it's, it's got the carbide and diamond tips. Once them tips are gone, this is just junk steel, but to make something like this, this is perfect. All right, we got our shelf drawn out on there. Now, I am gonna take and screw this thing down through there to hold it in place so I can cut it out. One more just to be just to be safe. I don't want to move. Alright, it's not going anywhere. Now I can cut that out. We're good to go.
cut this out with the angle grinder real quick. That way it'll slide up in that in the front. some supports for underneath. Right, Onto the lid, the front cover. Let it run down in all the little openings if there is any. coat inside the forge and enough there for another coat on the face. So, the last coat will get the fire brick set down in there as well. Inside of a forge, you don't have to any contest. Just don't want a real jagged. So we're gonna let this thing cure out. We'll be right back with the firing cycle. Here we go. We're gonna fire it up. See what she does.
burn. That's all we want for that first burn. We're going to leave it like that. Let it cool down. Then we'll come back and we'll burn it again for about Save five minutes. Time we're going to run it for about a minute or so. Maybe a little longer. We'll see how it's doing. So she's done cooled down to the touch here inside there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this bad boy up to forging temperature. See what happens. Alright folks, there you have it. She's ready to rock and roll. She's getting up the temperature. It's fine. Burning. Pretty blue flame in there. I say she's done. Let this thing roll for about 15 20 minutes just to really cook that coke in there, and we're gonna call this one done. All right, All right folks, there you have it. That's how I reline my forge. Um, gotta say, first off, thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. Um, you guys are awesome. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys, I would have been able to justify buying the refractory to be able to redo this right now. I would have had to suffer through it wait. So, again. Thank you for all those who contribute to Patreon. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a, uh, the link right there, or I'll leave Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Forge. Uh, also, uh, again, with the KO Wolf, please use your safety gear. Please use your safety gear. Stuff dangerous. It's, it's a very, very big health hazard. You don't want to bring those fibers in. When you mess with it, really, it's a ceramic fiber. Um, and it's got all kinds of other nasty crap in it. Make sure you get a breather, for sure. Definitely wear a breather. Long sleeves, it's prevented from itching because it's like fiberglass. Uh, the goggles, it's prevented from getting in your eyes, especially if you wear contacts like me, you don't want it in your eyes at all. So wear your safety gear, uh, get you some refractory. Um, make sure that your refractor is rated for 2300 plus degrees if you're gonna be doing any forge welding. Make sure that you get something that's rated for that, as well as your K wool. The same. I use two inch K wool. Saint Night Refractory um, works great for me. Put it on good thick and it'll last you. Uh, as you can see, I put a shelf on the front of the forge. That's going to help me out a lot and made the door bigger to so get my hammers in and out easier without beating it up. So these access is definitely a great thing. So thank you to all the Patreons as well. You guys made this possible. All you guys are awesome. Thank you, my subscribers, all the support here on YouTube. Really appreciate it. And as we say here at Caroline Forge, we're going to catch you on the next one.